Applications of differentiation. In this video, we are going to continue with increasing and decreasing functions. You will find this on page 275 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. For the function, find the range of values for, for uh, values of x for which this is an increasing. Just take note, this is a cubic function. The previous one was a quadratic function. And then find the range of values of x for which this function is decreasing. Okay, so let's take the function, the cubic function, and we differentiate it. So in this case, after it's differentiated, or the derivative function, it's a quadratic function. Now, just like in the previous example, if I want to see increasing, then the derivative function will be bigger than zero. But now, this is going to give me a quadratic inequality. And I have to solve it like I did in the, in, in the previous chapters. So quadratic inequalities. Okay, so first make it an equation. Put it equal to zero. Then factorize and then get your values of x. Now, because this is positive, the function will look like this, but it's cutting the x-axis there and there. So if I'm asking you the increasing part, it's actually indicating this part and this part. Okay, so how do I describe it? Or if I must use a number line, it's to this side and a number line to this side. So I'm going to say x is smaller than negative 3 over 2 or x is bigger than 4. Okay, so now I ask again, find the range of values of x for which this is decreasing. It's the same function. So I can use this information again. The decreasing part will be now underneath the x-axis. So it will be x is bigger than negative 3 over 2 and smaller than 4. This is a very nice summary, just to summarize it. If you work with the original function, you can look. It's, if it's going up, it's increasing, down, decreasing, up, increasing. And this is actually what it was indicating there. So from there, okay, let's try to put it like this. And okay, so that was my increasing part. And my decreasing part was basically then from here to there, and it was that part. But if I work with the derivative function and I have a sketch, then the increasing part will be above the x-axis and the decreasing part will be below the x-axis. But then I'm working with the differentiated function. Okay. I want you to stop the video and I want you to do number 1, A and B as well as number three. You can continue the video as soon as you are finished. Okay, let's start. Number one A. For the function this, find the range of values of x for which this is increasing. Okay, so first take the function, Okay, and now differentiate. Find the derivative function. This is cubic, so now it's quadratic. See? Okay, now if, if I'm saying increasing, then it means that must be bigger than zero. So it means that 3x squared minus 24x plus 45 must be bigger than 0. And now I'm going to solve this. Now if I solve this, let's just first make, and it's almost like I'm doing it on the side. Okay. So it's going to be 
first to solve a quadratic inequality, first make it an equation. Just to find where it cuts the x-axis. Now, before you factorize, it's always good to simplify, then it's easier to factorize. So divide by 3, all the terms. And now you will start. Okay, so it's 1 and 1, 5 and 3, because 5 plus 3 will be 8. Signs will be the same, x, x. So it's going to be x minus 5, x minus 3 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 5 or x is equal to 3. And if you're going to now, um, let's just get, just see the sketch. Okay, so if you're going to draw that sketch, um, it's going to be something like, oh, sorry, just get a normal line again. So, okay, so this is 3, this is 5. Now, if I'm asking for bigger, bigger will be above, above. So, therefore, therefore, x will be smaller than 3 or x will be bigger than 5. Okay, that is now for my increasing part. And if I take the same function and I'm asking the decreasing, I can use this sketch again. So I'm just going to go B, so it's actually indicating that part there. So I'm going to say, I can just be a little bit more, more formal. I can say when F is smaller than zero. Okay y decreases so therefore x is bigger than 3 and smaller than 5 indicating that part okay let's do number 3 now just take note number 3 is having a little bit a more complicated function as soon as you see a complicated part think of the chain rule just going to make space. Okay, number three. The equation, and again I'm writing down the equation. Okay, now it's almost like the sum and difference rule of differentiation. This part is a bit complicated. Unless I multiply out the bracket, which I can also do, which is maybe sometimes easier, um, I can use the chain rule for this part and then just um, differentiate this part. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to just use the chain rule for this part. So if I'm saying, and then I will just differentiate this one. So if I'm saying y is equal to 1 over 6, u to the power of 3, and what is u? u is 2x minus 3. So if I have dy over du, it's going to be 1 over 6 multiply 3, that 3, u squared, and du over dx equals 2, and then dy by dx is equal to now this don't forget this is a half so it's going to be a half u squared multiply 2 okay which is just going to give me then 1 so it's going to be u squared okay let's just see u squared so it's going to be oh, let's just put u in this u this you, this you, you, okay, so it's just going to be, because this become 1, so it's just going to be 2x minus 3 squared, so that is going to be that blue part, and if I differentiate the whole thing, I'm just going to say dy, therefore dy by du, dx, and it's going to be that 2x minus 3 squared, that's part, minus 4. It's just the sum and the difference. So I use the sum, I, I differentiate this part, then I differentiate that part. Okay. I can multiply it out, which I think is easier if I work further. 
So let's square this one. So it's 4x squared. This is minus 6, so it's minus 12x plus negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 minus 4, which is going to be 4x squared minus 12x plus 5. Okay, now there is my derivative function. And now, find the set of values for which is increasing, okay? So again, let's just, let's just find quickly. So increasing, this is a quadratic. So if it's increasing, I can just say, um, just put this. When f. bigger than zero, y increases, so that means that I have to first put this step, bigger than zero, because it's increasing. Now I can take it and say, okay, I'm going to quickly solve my quadratic inequality. make it an equation. Okay, so let's see if I solve that. Uh, 5 and 1, uh, what will it be? 2 and 2. Let's see if it works. 10 plus 2 is 12. Excellent. Minus minus x, x. So basically it's going to be 2x minus 5, 2x minus 1 equals 0. Okay, where is my sketch? Let's, oh, sorry. Just going to use rather a ruler. Okay, maybe I can just first say, put this equals zero, then x then x is equal to two and a half, and this is x is equal to a half. Okay, so basically if I make that sketch. This is a half, and this is two and a half, okay? And then basically, I'm just going to go on and say it's bigger, that part, and that part. So therefore, x, and your, if it's a number line, remember, it's like this, and it's like this. So x is smaller than a half or x is bigger than two and a half or five over two. And that's your final answer. We will look in the next video at another example.